Uh, yeah, that's one. Yeah, this one's a bit higher. Jayada Dhamma Dhabha Kunja Bihari Jayada Jayada Dhamma Dhabha Kunja Bihari Gopijana Bala Ba Girid Badadari Raja Jana Dandana Jai 
यमुना तीड़ा मन चाड़ी जय राधा माधबा कुंजा बिहारी हे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम रम राम हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय राधा बाल बराधा बाल बची राधे बाल बराधा बाल बची राधे जय जगना जय जगना जय बलदेव जय सुबद जय गौरानीताय 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 जय गौरानीताय 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 नीताय गौर हरिबाल हरिबाल जय जय प्रभु 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 जय जय प्रभु जय विष्णु 
पार परम हंस परिवराज कचर्य अस्तर सर शिष मारी मांगे से श्री भक्ति वरानग शमी महाराज न प्रभु भार की राय श्री श्री राध बाल भगवान की राय जगन्नाथ पल रीप सुमर देवी की राय श्री श्री गोणी राय की राय गौर प्रेम नंदी up a little bit more high. Maybe we need to bring another one. Is there another block? Like this? Yeah. Now we can put this on top and make it a little bit more No, no. Oh, put this on top of make this a little bit more high. The two, two, two beside each other. Now probably two together. Yeah. No, no. Just one? Put one beside the other one? Yeah. Now put the whole thing. Yeah, wow, very good. Thank you. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya This morning uh, we're reading from the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Canto 7, Chapter 15, Text 27. <coughs> Eshavai Bhagavan Shakshat Pradana Purusheshvaraha Yogeshvara Vimrigangri Vimrigangri Loko Jammanyate Naram Eshavai Bhagavan Shakshat Pradana Purusheshwaraha Yogeshvare Vimrigangi Vimrigangri Loko Jammanyate Naram Eshavai Bhagavan Sakshat Pradana Purusheshwaraha Yogeshvare Vimrigangri Vimri Gangi Loko Jammanyate Naram Someone else? Yogeshvare Vimriyangri Loko Jammanyate Naram Vaishnavis Eshavai Bhagavan Sakshat Pradana Puruseshwaraha Yogeshvare Vimriyangri Loko Jammanyate Naram Eshavai Bhagavan Sakshat 
ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಪುರುಷೇಶ್ವರ ಯೋಗೇಶ್ವರೇ ವಿಮೃಗ್ಯಾಂಗ್ರೀ ಲೋಕೋದ ಮನರೇನರ ಏಷವಾ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ನರ ಪುರುಷೇಶ್ವರ ಯೋಗೇಶ್ವರೇ ವಿಮೃಗ್ಯಾಂಗ್ರೀ ಲೋಕೋದ ಮನರೇನರ word for word esha, esha this vai indeed, indeed. bhagavan, bhagavan the supreme personality of godhead, supreme personality of godhead. sakshat, sakshat. <coughs> directly <Yes>. pradana <coughs> the chief cause of the material nature, the of, the material nature. Purusha, purusha of all living entities, all living entities. or of the purusha avatar the purusha. lord vishnu Ishwara, Ishwara the supreme controller, supreme controller. yoga ishwara uh, by great saintly persons by great saintly persons yogis vimrigya angri lord krishna's lotus feet lord feet which are sought loka <coughs> people in general <coughs> yam him manyate consider naram a human being <coughs> translation the supreme personality of god it lord krishna is the master of all other living entities and of the material uh, nature his lotus feet are sought and worshiped by great saintly persons like vyasa nonetheless there are fools who consider lord krishna an ordinary human being Pipot. The example of Lord Krishna as being the supreme personality of God it is appropriate in regard to understanding the spiritual master. The spiritual master is called Sevaka Bhagavan. The servitor personality of God it and Krishna is called Sevya Bhagavan. The supreme personality of God it who is to be worshiped. <coughs> the uh, spiritual master is the worshiper god. where is the supreme personality of god at krishna is the worshipable god this is the difference between the spiritual master and the supreme personality of godhead another point bhagavad gita which constitutes the instructions of the supreme personality of godhead is presented by the spiritual master as it is without deviation therefore the absolute truth is present in the spiritual master as clearly stated in text 26 jnana deepa prade <coughs> the supreme personality of god it gives real knowledge to the entire world and the spiritual master as a representative of the supreme godhead carries the message throughout the world therefore on the absolute platform there is no difference between the spiritual master and the supreme personality of godhead if someone considers the supreme personality krishna or lord ramchandra to me an ordinary human being this does not mean that the lord becomes an ordinary human being similarly if the family members of the spiritual master who is the bona fide representative of the supreme personality of god it consider the spiritual master an ordinary human being this does not mean that he becomes an ordinary human being <coughs> spiritual master is as good as the supreme personality of godhead and therefore one who is very serious about spiritual advancement must regard the spiritual master in this way even a slight deviation from this understanding can create disaster in the disciples vedic studies and austerities eshava bhagavan shakshat pradana purusheshwara yogeshvare vimrgangri loko jammanate naram the supreme personality of god lord krishna is the master of all living entities and of the material nature his lotus feet are sought and worshiped by great saintly persons like vyasa none uh, nonetheless there are fools who consider lord krishna an ordinary human being <coughs> so this uh, chapter is entitled uh, instructions for the civilized human beings these instructions are given to uh, narad muni and uh, I believe he is talking to to is he's talking to oh yeah, my king Yudhisthira he's talking to king Yudhisthira king Yudhisthira of course has already 
very knowledgeable what is the, uh, the human civilization, what is the best position for the human civilization. Uh, nevertheless, he is listening very submissively uh, to the great uh, uh, spiritual master Narada Muni. Now, I, I was just in Perth and we were speaking from the Bhagavatam about how Lord Shiva <clears throat> was giving instruction at Kailash and so many great personalities were sitting listening, although even these personalities were gurus also, like Narad Muni was sitting and listening, Kumaras were sitting and listening, uh, the heads of their own Sampradaya, great Acharyas. So uh, even one is very, very advanced, still before a great personality, uh, one is very, uh, one, one, even one is advanced, uh, one of the symptoms of advancement is that they are very humble. They are very humble. So Narad Muni gives instruction, Kumara gives, in, they, they give instruction, but they are also very humble when there is another great personality, especially someone of the position of Lord Shiva, uh, the Supreme Lord Krishna, uh, any incarnation. They are very humble, they listen very submissively, and they are always very respectful uh, to uh, receiving transcendental knowledge just rightly. So this instruction for civilized human beings, Narad Muni is giving to Yudhisthira. So part of being civilized, there are so many instructions previously given, is that one has to, in the human form of life, approach a guru uh, for making advancement on the spiritual path. This is part and parcel of being in human society, uh, at least in the Vedic times, these days, of course, in the Kali Yuga, no one gives much importance, no one even understands these things. Uh, but in the, uh, in the Vedic civilization, and this is all given, of course, by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, because he wants to uplift <clears throat> the, the fallen souls, uh, the conditioned souls, uh, especially those in the Kali Yuga. He wants to uplift, not only Kali Yuga, but every age, he wants to uplift them. Uh, even beyond human being, uh, uh, you know, the lower species of life, they don't have opportunity to go and listen to the guru or anything like that. They don't have much uh, opportunity to understand what is the spiritual knowledge. Uh, they are just impelled uh, by the modes of material nature to act in different ways. So, uh, <clears throat> in, the, oh, in the previous verses, it, but Nara Muni was giving very good instruction. Uh, one has to have the good behavior. This is all part of the civilized human society. Actually, he says by good behavior and not being envious of others, one counteracts sufferings due coming from others. So if you're giving trouble to someone else, uh, you're going to get trouble from someone else, uh, whether it's going to be that person directly or in some other way. Uh, so if you're a trouble maker and a trouble giver, you will get trouble coming your way also. That is just the law of nature, the law of the karma must be like that. So therefore Narad Muni gives very good advice. Uh, just be always do, uh, doing good behavior. Act nicely. Don't do bad behavior. Especially uh, uh, Prabhupada used to tell us that uh, you, my disciples, uh, there was some incident uh, where it, it, it got uh, bad publicity and Prabhupada said, you disciples, uh, you are trying your best, but nevertheless, uh, you have to act very appropriately in, in, in front of ordinary society, uh, lest our movement uh, be given a bad name and also uh, lest they, they are criticizing the guru. Because uh, I am the guru, you are my disciples, so if you are doing something bad, then that will reflect on me also. It will reflect on me also. Uh, so please behave appropriately. Good behavior. And, and don't be envious and jealous of others. Uh, and, and, and of course he mentions, don't be the greedy. Don't be greedy. Today, uh, the, 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 the principle of greed is so prevalent, uh, it's so strong and getting more stronger. Uh, one of the symptoms uh, of the Kali Yuga especially, greed, greed. Uh, everyone wants to get more and more than ever satisfied. I think it was mentioned previously that people should learn to be satisfied. They are uh, in the world, 
They have got certain position due to their past activities, due to the arrangement of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is actually given to them under the arrangement of the Supreme Lord. They, they have to become, learn to become satisfied. Don't be always wanting, 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 uh, running here, running there, 100 mile an hour. Uh, we were reading about Lord Shiva in his Kailasha boat, how so beautiful there and all the yogis like to go there because there's mode of goodness. Uh, mode of goodness people, they like to go to mode of goodness places. And of course those in the spiritual life, they like to go to the spiritual places. So Kailasha of course is both the mode of goodness being in the high in the Himalaya and uh, uh, the abode of Lord Shiva is a very spiritual place. So it is a very a, a sought after. Those in the mode of passion, they like to go to places mode of passion. There's the big, big cities all over the world, running everyone, running around 100 mile an hour, uh, going quick, 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 uh, getting more, more, more. And th th so those, th those people in the Rajagun, they like these places. And those in the mode of ignorance, they like to uh, dirty places. Uh, always lazy, always uh, sleeping. Uh, uh, they like that situation. Uh, so those in the mode of goodness, they don't like the mode of ignorance. Those in the mode of ignorance don't like the mode of goodness. Uh, Prabhupada one time said that uh, he made a comment about the dirty, uh, the temple was a little bit dirty, ashram was a little bit dirty, and he said that is mode of ignorance. It has to be sattvagun, mode of goodness. And if you're not uh, feeling any discomfort by living like that, by see, even seeing that mode of ignorance, that means you are in the mode of ignorance. You don't feel any discomfort. Everything dirty, everything unregular, everything uh, lazy, uh, and you don't feel any discomfort, you're in also part of the situation. <laughs> Probably, uh, 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 you know, uh, also giving to the whole <laughs> situation. So, so therefore we have to understand, we can understand what is our advancement by our, our symptoms, uh, if we're uh, uh, you know, happy in the mode of ignorance. Uh, and generally those in the mode of ignorance, they don't even know they're in the mode of, they're just in the mode of ignorance. Uh, but you know, you, you can tell a little bit, and they can even tell a little bit, that they, they, they prefer these types of places, and others will prefer more um, mode of passion and, and greediness. The greediness, especially in the mode of passion, is very strong. Uh, wanting more, 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 more money, more, more money. Uh, you know, they're, they're worshipping, you know, they're not worshipping God, they're worshipping uh, money as their God. Uh, I worship money, 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 money. In fact, you put the money there and you do the worship, the puja. Uh, you can do, uh, worshipping the money. So money is everything. The prophet used to say, money is the honey. The money is the honey, get more. I remember what, there was one devotee, Prabhupada said, used to say, books are the basis, and one devotee was joking, oh, the materialists, they think bucks are the basis. <laughs> Means money is the basis. <laughs> Instead of books are the basis, they're thinking bucks are the basis. He was just joking. So that's, uh, that's the thinking. But uh, as I said, in the mode of goodness, the people like mode of goodness places. Generally, these are the forests and nice uh, lakes and uh, everything like that and uh, nice uh, green, everything uh, clean, everything nice, uh, nice air, everything very nice. Uh, the people like that. This is mode of goodness and then the holy places, that is the spiritual. Uh, of course someone is very, very advanced. <clears throat> spiritual, doesn't matter where he is. He can be in the mode of ignorance, but he will turn that place into the mode of goodness. Uh, I always remember when Prabhupada came to Australia one time, one report asked him, so uh, Swami, how you like this country? And Prabhupada just said, oh, I like it everywhere. <laughs> In other words, there was no difference for him which country he went. We are making the difference. Oh, I like this country. I like India better. I like the America better. I like the Russia better. I like the Africa better. I like Australia better. Uh, and this is good and this is not so good. But for the one who is very advanced, he doesn't see any difference. He, everything he sees in relation to Krishna. Uh, then another time... Uh, some disciples were walking with Prabhupada on the beach and one disciple said, Prabhupada, you know, when I walk on the beach sometimes I'm seeing all the people they're enjoying and I'm, you know, and uh, I'm not always thinking of Krishna. And Prabhupada turned, he stopped, he stopped and he turned, he said, oh, I am different. Everything I see, I think Krishna. I see the sea, Krishna. I see the sand, Krishna. The sky, Krishna. It's all in the consciousness. What is the consciousness? So, of course, one very, very advanced doesn't matter. But, of course, we're beginning devotees, so we're, we have to look for the more con most conducive. 
the most conducive places to practice the spiritual life. So very kindly, Srila Prabhupada has given uh, uh, International Society for Krishna Consciousness, made many branches all over the world. Uh, he wanted many temples everywhere, uh, not only uh, India, but in all the countries, so the people of that country could take advantage and go to the holy place, not only mode of goodness place, uh, because mode of goodness uh, can never be free uh, from the mode of passion or ignorance. So you can go, uh, just like people go on the Easter holiday, uh, they just went to the, maybe they went to the country, they went to the camping. Uh, just recently we went, um, uh, we, I was in Perth and they had the devotees organized uh, uh, a camp. They, every, all the devotees went to a camp. It was not so far from the temple. Bickley, Bickley Camp. <laughs> Very beautiful area. And all the devotees, of course, had uh, kirtan and prashad and, 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 very, and a seminar, lecture, all these things were going on. Very, very nice. So nearby, in, uh, in the other area, some other people, they were going for the Easter holiday and they were camping there, but I saw one man, he was very frustrated and angry because uh, he had some accident uh, with the caravan and he was, uh, <laughs> the wheel was broken or something like that and he was in a very angry mood. So even though uh, someone can go uh, to the mode of goodness place, uh, still it can be afflicted by mode of passion and ignorance. So therefore the best thing is go to the spiritual place. The spiritual place. Uh, spiritual place means that you have to uh, uh, go like to the temple. So Narad Muni is giving a very good instruction here. Uh, you know, uh, how to counteract sufferings. Uh, even in, 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 uh, in the physical, you do uh, pranayama, you do the hatha yoga, you do so many things, you can do all these things to counteract some physical uh, inconvenience, discomfort. Uh, you know, of course devotees, uh, sometimes we're doing this type of yoga and uh, uh, we're, oh, we're chanting, we're doing kirtan and we're running up and down and spinning around. Uh, we're just on the weekend, we had big kirtan, everyone uh, was jumping and spinning and the kids especially, they like to go running and dancing. Uh, so this is also exercise. <laughs> you, you combine the two together, physical exercise and kirtan together. Uh, you know, and just like Prabhupada, he liked to go uh, japa. He had to go for the health, he had to do walking. So uh, he combined the walking with japa. Uh, just like every day, I, like to, I have to also go walking for the health. A walking exercise. Maharaj, you want lift? One time devotee said, you want lift? Anywhere? No, I'm going exercise. And uh, so exercise by doing the japa exercise, you see. So Krishna Khan is so nice uh, that combined together we can do, uh, or you can do uh, other things extra. So anyway, so very nice instruction is given here. Now, of course, uh, uh, net, you know, apart from these instructions, general instructions, social instructions, and so on and so forth, don't become uh, control the envy, uh, act appropriately. All these nice instructions. Now, Narad Muni comes to the point that all right, now this is on the, uh, that platform. Now, for the spiritual, for the more, more high spiritual, you have to approach the guru. This is very imperative. It's part of human civilization to approach the guru, and who is the good guru, the one who has been the good disciple, uh, that one can be the good guru. Uh, who is the best guru? The one who has been the best disciple. Because, and they have learned from their guru, who has learned from their guru, their guru, their guru, and who is Adi guru, original guru? Krishna. Krishna is Adi. Um, so he very much emphasizes one has to come mode of goodness and especially one comes to the Sudha Sattva and to maintain, actually he says in the previous verse, he says, all this can be done, all these things can be done automatically if one engages in the service of the spiritual master with faith and devotion. Very, very important part of uh, human civilization to approach the bona fide spiritual master. In this way we can conquer the influence of the modes of nature. Now the modes of nature are very strong as we've been describing, uh, mode of ignorance, very strong mode of passion, it's pushing everyone. Uh, people, don't, they don't even understand these things. They're just impelled. We see the lower animals, uh, they're just impelled by their urges. Uh, they have to eat, so they just uh, they're looking where to eat, where to, where to drink, where to drink. They're just being pushed, pushed along. They don't even understand. Just eating, eating. Just like uh, our cows there at New Govardhan, uh, all day long eating. 
Uh, they don't know, they're just eating all day. Very nice animal, cow, mother cow, but all day long eating. <laughs> imagine if you were just all day eating. <laughs> Some people will like, of course. But imagine if you had to be forced that all you did all day long was eating. <laughs> no other activity, practically. <laughs> just eating or sleeping. Uh, there are people, I used to have a friend that uh, would sleep uh, 14, 16 hours a day. Uh, <laughs> we used to call him Sleepyhead. So, uh, uh, but uh, he would uh, very much like to 14 hours, 16 hours every day just sleeping. Uh, so, uh, but then uh, you waste your whole life. What are you doing with your life? Just sleeping? That means if you calculate mathematically, if you're sleeping 14, 16 hours a day, how much time are you living? How much time are you doing? In the, if you live maybe, if you calculate 100 years, if you're sleeping 14, 16 hours a day, then you're, on, you're only acting, I don't know how, who can do the quick calculation, maybe 20 years or 30 years. The rest of the time, 70 years you're sleeping. <laughs> Become like Kumbhakan. <laughs> so uh, one shouldn't do like that. And then how, but how to come out of that mode of ignorance and mode of passion uh, uh, here, Narumuni says, all this can be done automatically. Uh, you can do other things uh, in the Shastra. There's mentioned you, you can do like this, you can do, you can do like that if you follow. Uh, but, uh, you know, automatically it can be done if you go approach and you find the bona fide guru and he will instruct you. Uh, he, he has learnt from his guru who has learnt from his guru and so on. Uh, so, uh, it, now, this had, now, when you approach, of course, the guru, uh, you have to do this with faith and devotion. This is very much emphasized in the previous verse. And also today, Narad Muni uh, gives the example, but it's in conjunction with the previous verse. And Prabhupada, of course, uh, understands this, and he very much uh, emphasizes on the point. Now, Narad Muni gives the example of the Supreme Personality of God. He says, e shavai Bhagavan Shakshat Pradana Purusheshvaraha. Now, although the Supreme Personality of God, of course, is Bhagawan, the Supreme of all. Bhagawan Shakshat, he is directly the Supreme. He is the Pradana Purusha. He is the, uh, the, the Lord of the uh, Purusha, the, the, the material nature. He is Purusha Avatar. He is Purusha Eshwara, uh, the Lord. He is the Lord of everything. And great personalities, and he gives the example of Vyasadeva, great personalities of Vyasadeva, he is revered. Acharya, Guru, he's revered. They are worshipping Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God. They are worshipping. But even though they are worshipping, even though they are worshipping, uh, still, and uh, he uses very strong, the, the strong word, oh, oh no, actually Prabhupada, oh no, actually Narad Muni uses the word. How is he called? Uh, here that's translated. That, that there are still fools. There are still fools. And uh, Krishna says the same thing in uh, Bhagavad Gita. Avadananti mam mudha. So, avadananti mam mudha. So, fools deride me when I descend in the human form. So in the previous uh, in the previous verse, Maya Dakshina Prakite Sujite Sacharacha, Krishna says the same thing as as Narad Muni says here. I am the uh, the supreme Lord uh, of the Maya. It is my energy. Everything is coming under me. And Narad Muni says the same thing here about Krishna. Everything comes under Krishna. He is the Purush Eshwara of the Pradana. He is the Supreme Lord. A great personalities worship him. But there are some fools who don't who don't who don't accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God. Now, you would have to be considered a fool. This is not a wrong word. <laughs> this is a right word. You know, if, if so many people are following and doing something that is very good and, and, and great authorities are, are ascertaining, yes, this is very good. So many great authorities are saying, just like if you can go to the doctor and uh, he, you are sick and here is the medicine and, uh, well, all right, uh, let me just check if this is the right medicine. You are the doctor, but let me check other doctor. Yes, he says same thing. Let me check other doctor. Yes, he says same thing. And then let me maybe let me check another ten. They, they all say same thing. 
But still, I'm not going to accept. No, I don't I, know. I, no. Therefore, you're a fool. <laughs> you know, this, this is the definition practically of fool. You know, so many great personalities are saying, and so many personalities are saying that uh, 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 this thing is good, but still you don't follow. This is a uh, combination of stubbornness and foolishness. Uh, stubbornness is also a symptom of the... Uh, uh, stubbornness uh, well, can be a symptom of the mode of ignorance. So, uh, so therefore, Narumuni gives an ex example that the Supreme Lord, he is revered, he is worshipped. Uh, so many are devoted to him. They, have great, uh, they offer him great uh, respect and uh, with love and devotion they serve him. So the Guru must be seen in the same way. Even though some may say that he is, uh, we shouldn't do like that. We shouldn't uh, follow a Guru. Uh, we shouldn't uh, follow the guru with this type of attitude. And uh, he, he, it is very, in Prabhupada says here, just like someone may not accept Krishna, someone may not accept Lord Rama, and someone may say they are just ordinary uh, uh, people. Uh, but that doesn't make them ordinary, just because this one says, or this other one says, or the other one says, <coughs> doesn't mean that they are ordinary people. Just like uh, Prabhupada says here, just like uh, the, the, the family of the Guru just may accept him just as ordinary because they are living with him and they, maybe he is the husband or he is the father or he is the brother or something like that. So th th then they are treating, they are interacting with him in a very uh, a familiar way, perhaps uh, a little bit uh, without uh, um, you know, reverence because they are in the family situation. But still, even though they are doing like that, uh, still he is to be considered uh, and, and to be, uh, the attitude should be he should be revered. Of course, not, not all those in a family, just like Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he all, always revered his father, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He always revered him as a great, not only his father, but he is a great guru and he always revered him and, uh, and, uh, and worshipped him as his guru uh, and like that. So not all, so, that, so it takes someone who is actually spiritually advanced, even though they are with, traveling with someone or living with someone to understand that that person they are living with is actually a very spiritually advanced person. They themselves have to be spiritually advanced to understand this point. Uh, just like we see with Sula Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And, uh, and, and uh, we see with Prabhupada. Now, Prabhupada would quite often change his uh, assistants who were traveling with him and his servants that, uh, who were serving him, uh, lest they became too familiar. <clears throat> and not that he cared, but in his position as guru, he had to make sure that, uh, uh, that they, uh, they kept the right uh, attitude towards uh, their guru and not become overly familiar in the mundane sense. Generally, when one becomes overly familiar, there sometimes resentment builds up, uh, sometimes uh, uh, envy builds up, <clears throat> and one can commit offence. One can commit offence. So one has to avoid aparads, offences, especially at the feet of the guru. Now, Krishna gives direct inst instruction in Bhagavad Gita, Tadvidi, Pranipatina, Pariprashtina, Seva, Upadekshintiti Jnanam, Jnanas Tatpadashtina, that one has to, if you want to know the absolute truth, you have to go to the Guru. So Krishna himself says, gives this instruction. And one has to serve him. And one should be submissive to him. Uh, and in this way, the self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth. So this attitude is actually uh, given by Sri Krishna Bhagavan. What is the attitude? Serve, serve the Guru and inquire from him submissively with respect. So very, very important that one maintain this attitude. Uh, otherwise, uh, as I said, uh, you can commit aparad. There's all sorts of aparads. There can be nam aparad, uh, fences in your chanting. There can be seva aparad, you're doing service, uh, but you're committing offense in your service. You didn't do the service properly. Sometimes this can be done consciously or even unconsciously. Uh, perhaps you're not educated enough to know that this is not the right way to do it. Uh, or maybe you, you, you knew it was the right way, but you did it wrong because you were lazy or something like that. Who, who knows what the reason may be. So there could be Nam Aparad, there could be Seva Aparad, there could be Vaishnava Aparad. Of course, we have to be careful in our dealings with everybody, not only devotees, but uh, outside people, everybody. Vaishnava is very humble 
uh, and uh, uh, you know, has to be careful in the dealings, doesn't want to commit any offences. Of course, if someone is acting non, non, in a nonsense way or speaking a nonsense way, and then the duty, of course, especially of the guru, and uh, is to say something if they're creating some sort of problem. They have to say something, maybe even something, they have to say something very boldly. But in general, the general principle is uh, that we are very humble in our dealings with everyone. But of course, there's different levels also that we have to be careful. The, the, the higher the level of a personality, the more respect has to be given. So, uh, uh, you know, we have to be careful uh, of committing offense, aparad, nam aparad, seva aparad, vaishnava aparad, uh, a guru aparad, guru aparad. We don't maintain proper respect. We're too familiar. We're resentful of the guru. We're envious of the guru. Uh, this is aparad. This is called what's called the hati mati aparad. Hati mati. You know, what is the hati? What is hati? Elephant. elephant. Hati mati means the mad elephant. Now you can be growing a garden and you can take so much effort. You may have spent six months, one year, two years making a nice garden. But if there's a wild elephant who's gone on the loose and he just can trample through your garden, within one minute it's finished. You understand this point? Within one minute that garden that you were preparing so with great hardship and work that you are working so hard to prepare for one year, two years, five years, ten years, twenty years you are working that that elephant can come through and destroy it within one minute because the elephant is so powerful. So powerful. So this apparat, Hati Mati uh, Guru apparat is such a great apparat that uh, you may have done devotional service but you start committing these types of offenses it can ruin uh, your advancement. And uh, uh, of course, what to do about that? There are things one has to do. Just like, as I said, we were reading in Perth about uh, Lord Shiva, and uh, uh, previously there was uh, Daksha Yajna. Daksha, yeah, there were two ja Daksha, you know, one time when Daksha, he was a Yajaman, he organized big Yajna, all the chief demigods, but because he was Yajaman, when he came, they all stood up, but Lord Shiva was in meditation, he didn't stand, and he took offense. Immediately he was offended that why Lord Shiva didn't stand. He just took him to be ordinary person, even though he is the greatest personality. He thought he just thought on the material level. First of all, he had a resentment against Lord Shiva because Sadi wanted to marry him, and he didn't want her to marry him because he thought, you know, naturally a father, you know, wants to see that someone who wants to be the husband of my daughter, he has to provide for her, look after her nicely, but who is this Lord Shiva? He's got ash all over him, has the matted hair, doesn't have any economy. You know, he didn't want him, want his daughter, but she was very uh, determined, so he just uh, allowed. And so he had some resentment. And then when he came and Lord Shiva didn't stand up, said, here's my son-in-law, I'm the father-in-law, he doesn't stand when I come. Everyone else stood up, and he didn't. So he took offense, he said some bad things, and then the others said some things against him. Again, it became a whole uh, uh, disaster, a whole disaster. That story is very famous, we knew about it many years ago, and sometimes when things go very bad in, 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 in a situation, uh, and uh, devotees commit offenses to e towards each other, sometimes many devotees are caught up, unfortunately can happen, and sometimes we, some, I heard one devotee, some, oh yeah, I came from that. That was terrible. It was a real, it was a real Daksha Yagya. <laughs> we used to say like that. Oh, terrible, horrible. He said this and she said that. Oh, horrible. I had to go away. It was a real Daksha Yagya. Oh, horrible. <laughs> I had to go away from there. So then that was the first one. And of course, uh, then there's another one. Uh, where Daksha again did, and then Sati wanted to make some sort of uh, peace between her father and her husband, even though Lord Shiva told, don't go there. But anyway, she went and he ignored her, didn't say anything, and then she became so offended. Yeah, I got this body from you. She is supreme also. Actually, she is worshipable by him. Daksha should worship Sati. She is uh, the material energy personified. So, but anyway, he ignored her and uh, she... Uh, committed the, uh, the suicide, set her, her body on fire, and so there was an outcry, and, uh, and then Lord Shiva heard about that thing, he created that Virabhadra, and all the soldiers went there, it was a whole disaster, so many were killed, everything like that, so then uh, all, the, all those that were left went to see Lord Brahma, what can we do, oh you've committed a great offence, 
against a very great, great personality, Lord Shiva. And so now we have to go and beg his forgiveness. So this is what you can do. You have to beg forgiveness and, uh, and, and fall at his feet. And then uh, if he forgives you, then maybe uh, you can overcome that offense. If he accepts, uh, if he accepts your, uh, 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 your, you know, your falling, and uh, you know, I just remember here many years ago, I, I used to be the um, you know, co-president here many years ago, and uh, while some of the bhaktas were fighting with each other, and one uh, uh, bhakta was feeling bad, he came to see me and uh, he said, oh, you know, I think I committed some offense. I said some bad things against that one. I said, well, you should go and, uh, you know, beg forgiveness uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, and, uh, and apologize and beg forgiveness. So then he came back again after a few hours. He said, I went there and I fell at his feet and I begged forgiveness. And, uh, but that one, he just said, no. I don't accept. <laughs> you offender. <laughs> so then I had to go speak that one also. I said that, uh, uh, you know, the Vaishnava is very forgiving. Very forgiving. One of, the, one of the main qualities of the Vaishnava, very forgiving. If someone comes, we see so many instances in the history of someone uh, who's committed offense, uh, they just uh, forgive them. There's a special place in, in Mayapur, what is it called, the uh, uh, Aparara Banjanam, uh, near the uh, Nambadweep side, where near uh, the, the place of uh, Sridhar Maharaj, uh, Prabhupada's god brother has his uh, mat there, and it's there, it's called, uh, it's called Aparara Banjanam. Uh, there's one famous story where um, David Underpundit went there and begged forgiveness from Lord Chaitanya. He said, you have to go to Sh Srivastaka, you committed offense against Srivastaka. If he forgives you, then all right. And then he went there, and he paid a big forgiveness, and then Shivas just picked him up. Yes, I accept your uh, um, apology, and everything was all right. So then, so we have to be careful committing them. The uh, last thing we want to do is commit to Aparada. We're very, very cautious about that type of thing. If something happens, uh, then there was one story, even unconsciously, that I, I might have told this before, but it's a very good story that illustrates this point. That one time Rupa Goswami in, in Radha Kund was feeling a little less love and, 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 and affection within his heart uh, to Radha and Krishna. And he was wondering why. He talked to his brother Sanatana Goswami. What do you think? And, and Sanatana Goswami, he, he offered that, well, maybe you committed some offense to some Vaishnava, uh, and uh, even unknowingly, and uh, your devotion has gone down because of that. And so uh, Rupa Goswami came up with a plan that he made a, a festival and a big feast and invited everyone of the area to come there. He invited everyone in the area uh, to come there and he especially noted who didn't come. Who didn't come. So then he found out that one that didn't come and he went there. Now what happened was that this particular uh, devotee had a, a, bit, a little bit of a disability and he walked funny when he was walking. He walked very strangely. So when he walked past, at that time Rupa Goswami was thinking about a funny pastime, Radha Krishna pastime, and he was laughing to himself. Just at that time that devotee walked past. So that devotee thought that he was laughing at him at how he was walking. So he didn't say anything because he was a devotee, but within his heart he felt a bit offended. And so, uh, of course, Rupa Goswami, he wasn't uh, thinking in that way, he was thinking something else. But unknowingly he committed that offense and he went and apologized. This is the position. This is how you deal with these situations. So, uh, very important to have the proper attitude uh, towards the Guru and uh, uh, render service unto him and uh, uh, inquire from him submissively. But of course that doesn't mean blindly following. Uh, just uh, follow with a relevant inquiry, but with respect. There's, a, uh, there's one uh, a story from the Purana, a very funny story. Don't blindly follow. Don't be less intelligent disciple. There's all different level of disciple. Uh, you know, Guru Bogi, <laughs> Guru Bogi, Guru Chagi, Guru Rogi. <laughs> one, who, one, who's given, one who's giving trouble to the Guru. <clears throat> one who's trying to enjoy the position of the Guru. Uh, 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 and, one, and one who's trying to renounce the Guru, Guru Chagi, Guru Bogi, Guru Rogi. There's one, uh, there was one the story from the Purana where one old Guru 
he had uh, he had some very less intelligent disciples, <laughs> but he wanted to go on the place of the pilgrimage. In so many places, so he was very also the, uh, the the disciples thought, well, let us get a, a donkey for the guru. Let us get a donkey. So the guru, uh, don't throw those things. Just behave nicely. So. Uh, um, uh, so he, they got the donkey, and so he was going, and so it was becoming very hot. And so the guru said, uh, uh, where is my hat? And the disciple said, oh, Guruji, your hat fell off the back of the, the donkey. And the guru said, well, why didn't you pick it up? Well, Guruji, you didn't tell us to pick it up. <laughs> Immediately go get my hat. And from now on, anything that falls off the back of the donkey, you catch it. So, of course, after some time, the, uh, the donkey felt the call of nature and uh, he was passing the stool as he was walking. And so the disciples were looking at each other. Guru, Guruji said, oh, we have to catch everything that falls from the donkey. A very stupid disciple. So what can we catch this thing with? Oh, we have the, the, uh, our guru's hat. <laughs> so they got the hat. And they caught all the stool in the hat. And then, of course, you know what happened next? The guru said, where is my hat? It's getting hot again. So then the disciple looking at each other. Oh, but the guru says, give us the, give the hat. He was becoming angry. Where is the hat? So they gave the hat and the guru put the hat. <laughs> so the story, the moral of the story is don't, don't be a foolish disciple. And also don't be foolish guru to have such foolish disciple also. You have to train your disciple not to be less intelligent, but more intelligent, and act and, and know all these things, how to act, and so on and so forth. So, uh, thank you very much, Hare Krishna. I'll just read this verse again. Eshavai Bhagavan Shakshat Pradana Purusheshwaraha Jogeshwara Vimrgangi Loko Jammanyate Naram. The Supreme Personality of God, Lord Krishna, is the master of all living entities of all other living entities and of the material nature. His lotus feet are sought, worshipped by great saintly persons like Vyasa. Nonetheless, there are fools who consider Lord Krishna an ordinary human being. So does anyone have any question? And you kids, no more throwing the paper aeroplanes. <laughs> who was the one throwing the paper aeroplane? Be truthful. Ah, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Not in the class, outside. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. Um, you mentioned before about how the Guru is meant to train uh, his disciples. Uh, but, you know, these days, the Guru is aloof from the disciples. So how does that work? <coughs> well, it, it, just like in Srila Prabhupada's time, uh, Silla Prabhupada initiated so many disciples, uh, but he trained his leaders how to train the others. So the guru uh, trains the, the uh, immediate disciples to train the other disciples. Because the guru, because he's a part of the duty of the guru is to travel and spread the Krishna consciousness all over the world. And actually Prabhupada mentions that uh, the guru one uh, is to... Spreading the Krishna. So, because he is spreading, he can't always be with the disciple, but he is trained. And Sula Prabhupada, he would have uh, leading devotees, uh, he called them. We saw this, he called them. All right, you, you come and travel with me one month. And then he would send him back, and then you, you, now you come. And, you, and, and the whole time he was speaking to them and training them, and then when they would go, he said, now when you go back, you train the others. So, the Guru can't always be um, uh, with the. Uh, disciples all the time, especially if, they, if the, he has many, many disciples, uh, just like some of our uh, older gurus, just like Jaipataka Swami. He told us at the GBC meeting, now he has 70,000 disciples. <laughs> so, so such a, a big guru like that with so many disciples, how he can be with so many disciples all the time, it's not possible. But he's training the disciple to look after the other more junior disciple and so on and then so on and so forth. So therefore the institution is there, the training is there, so uh, everyone gets uh, trained very nicely to read the books of the guru, read the books of the founder, and then you can go very nicely in devotional service. Hare Krishna. Yes, Mahatma Prabhu. 
Hare Krishna Ramai Swami. Yes. Very wonderful class. And you are making us laugh all the time, <laughs> which is very interesting. <laughs> also, the story of uh, Durvasa and uh, Amrish Maharaj. <laughs> How Amrish Durvasa Muni. Uh, Durvasa Muni. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wh what about that? Uh, how Amrish Maharaj was chastised by um, um, the Vasa Muni? The Vasa Muni, because he chastised, yeah. he was angry with Amrish Maharaj. Yeah, yeah. The spider fence. Yeah, 10,000 disciples because he had. Because he's had. got a, a, a partial manifestation of Lord Shiva is with him. That's right. And uh, he's got the touch of the ignorance yeah. and uh, passion. So sometimes they're very easily provoked. Yeah. The slightest thing. Yeah. And uh, this is due to excessive pride. Yeah. Uh, if someone is uh, too proud, even though he's a great scholar and very elevated personality, actually. Is, uh, of course, there was someone who is very elevated, as, you, as we know. Yeah. He could go to Lord Shiva, he could yeah. go to Lord Vishnu. But still, even great personality have to be careful because every yeah. now and again, if one has the pride, yeah. uh, you can be offended in your, That's someone right. can respect you properly, and then uh, immediately, just like we saw with, saw with Daksha. That's why yeah. Lord Vishnu course, sent... Uh, Lord, Shiva, Lord Shiva, he came there, uh, Daksha was killed by Virabhadra. And Lord Shiva accepted everyone's apology, and uh, Lord Brahma asked that uh, everyone be restored back to life again, even Daksha. That's so right. uh, his head was separated. So at that time, Daksha got the head of a goat. Lord Shiva got the head of the goat, one of the animals that were sacrificed, and put it on the head of Daksha and brought him back to life. And after that, Daksha was very humble. <laughs> <laughs> even Lord Vishnu said, "I can't do anything," and he sent him Sudarshan Chakra. Yeah, oh, follow yeah. him up. <laughs> yeah. So therefore, sometimes we need this type of punishment to, <laughs> to <laughs> realize, to make us humble. <laughs> the uh, the Basa needed that type of uh, chastisement. My my question, uh, I wanted to ask you something. Your comments, mm. uh, like Jayapataka Swami, he is putting 1,008 padcharan oh, yeah. all over the world. So, what are your comments about that, please? Yeah, right. I, I heard he's doing in uh, Brindaban. Yeah, in the, in the next few days. Yeah, and uh, thousands of people have gone there, yeah. and now they are putting around the world the Pachin or Lord Chaitanya. He wants to do around the world. Yeah, one thousand eight Pachin. He wants to do one thousand eight. Yeah. yeah, Hare Krishna, very yeah. wonderful. He's a very so what do you think? Is he's always a, very enthusiastic for these types of activities. What do I think about it? Very wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> very wonderful activity. We should, uh, if we got chance to participate, we should. Participate. Jai, all glories to Silla Prabhupada, Ki Jai, Gaur Pemanandi, Hari Hari Bol. <laughs> in the front there. <laughs> yeah. I was taking some notes of the class yeah. and uh, I, I couldn't finish one and I forgot the rest of the class. He said that, so Narayan said like by good behavior you know, we can be some others. So what, what was like the outcome of that? <laughs> Well, he's giving in, in general instruction to uh, Unity Mark. One should maybe not envy. If one, the, the outcome was that if, to, to overcome this envy, you have to uh, 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 serve the great devotees. So if one has the envy, uh, and this is not very good, but to overcome the envy, then go and serve the great devotees very humbly and just serve and serve all the Vaishnavas, then gradually your envy will overcome you. <laughs> Sign your notebook. Okay. Are you nice notes? <laughs> yeah, taking very nice notes. <laughs> I do. I give up. I give up. <laughs> Just there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you. Please. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, okay. And Koti Prabhu son, I agree with Maharaj. Oh yeah, I agree with that. Your name is Maharaj. And you were here? In the top. Oh yeah, that's my name there. Good handwriting also.